But this morning, I am so excited to be part of Cedar Park. Amen. Those who had a good cup of coffee, shout an amen. amen. Oh, good, good, good. So the more the amens that I receive, the more faster I preach and get it all done. And you can go for your wonderful breakfast. If we can all stand together and read the word of God, and as a sign of respect for the word of God, I'm going to read from John chapter 4, uh, from verse 46. Let me see where I put my glasses. This morning, I, I put my glasses in one of the pockets, and the pocket had a hole, and it went to the bottom of my suit. And I called my wife, go and bring my glasses, but it was right here. But anyhow, from verse 46, let me read that for you. You just go on, listen. So Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. The nobleman said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go your way, your son lives. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him saying, your son lives. Then he inquired of them the hour when he got better. Then they said to him, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said to him, your son lives and he dis- and he himself believed and his whole household this again is the second sign jesus did when he had come out of judea into Galilee. Father, I thank you for the beautiful manna word that you've given to us this morning. Bless this word. I thank you, Lord God, for all the signs, wonders, and miracles that Jesus did and are still happening all over the world. I thank you for Cedar Park Church. Everyone who has come this morning will receive something from you. Some signs, wonders, and miracles in their lives, Lord God. May they go home with the with the blessed feeling with the miraculous feeling with miracles in their house waiting to happen in Jesus name and everybody shouted amen 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 amen. please be seated please be seated I just want to once again thanks thanks to uh, Pastor Jay I love Cedar Park Church because this is one of the church uh, there where the light is there whether the big lights are on or not the other light is uh, the sun light is still inside many churches that I travel around the world they turn the lights off in the church it bothers me a little bit because Jesus said I am the light of the world and you go to church and if the church is a little bit dark uh, it uh, affects me a little bit but you know what I like the light I want to see the faces I want to see the miracles what God has done in your life you sitting here this morning is a miracle from God you could have been dead long time ago but it is the grace of God the mercy of God the goodness of God the kindness of God that you are sitting sitting here alive and well hallelujah well this morning yeah well last time pastor jay when he was preaching he was preaching out of the uh, uh, book of john you know, he's doing this series. He always uh, uh, titles him. I went back and listened to the message and he told me, Pastor Andrew, you preach whatever you like, uh, whatever you want, whether it is a continuation or anything that you want to do is fine. But, you know, I p- picked up this uh, portion of the scripture uh, specifically. I've not preached from it. This is my practice message. See, once I get a little practice, I can go back and preach somewhere else a little better. So just bear with me. He preached up about seeing Jesus clearly and uh, he, that was the title I don't never give titles a title to my messages I let the sound guys figure it out they'll be 
choosing all kinds of titles for the message and I'll at the end man I never thought of that title but today I thought of a nice title as I was uh, flying back from Australia I wanted to see what was happening on the on the news and I know there was many many things that happened I liked when uh, when the president held up the Washington Post and he said acquitted so I titled my message acquitted president Trump said acquitted acquitted we are acquitted by Jesus Christ hallelujah acquitted of our sins acquitted of our sickness acquitted of all of our situations acquitted 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 at the cross of Calvary we bring as a divine exchange we bring our sins we get the acquitted certificate hallelujah we get all the the benefits at the cross of Calvary hallelujah whether you like the title or not but forget the title let's go to the Word of God this morning this means we we are not guilty we have been forgiven we have been changed we have been transformed by the power of God hallelujah you know the John the book of John is a very very interesting book chapter 1 you know all the Baptist claim this is John the Baptist we are also Baptist so they they are very 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 happy about that and the chapter 2 is like the charismatic guys own chapter 2 because uh, the the wine it talks about the water changing into wine I don't know how you took it uh, but whatever way I'm talking about the new wine the good wine hallelujah and uh, and then uh, chapter 3 it's a uh, Nick at night he comes Nicodemus at night and uh, uh, how many of you watch Nick at night but anyhow uh, the, the, this uh, chapter 3 is owned by all the denominations of the world everybody owns chapter 3 and uh, verse 16 John, uh, for God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son and when it comes to chapter 4 this is, gets a little, uh, who owns this? Uh, this is the grace theology, the Samaritan woman, the healing theology. I don't know. But one thing I know for sure, God is in the miracle working business. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. There are six unique miracles in the book of John. You don't have to write them all down. You can go home and uh, uh, figure it all out. Number one, this is not written in all the other synoptic gospels, only in the book of John. Jesus turned the water into wine. Jesus heals the nobleman's son. Jesus heals the man at the pool of Bethesda. Jesus spits in somebody's eyes and the blindness goes away. He raises Lazarus from the dead. And uh, last of all, the miracles, the big catch of fish. J these are six beautiful miracles only recorded in the book of John. And the first one, you know, uh, we already we saw uh, last week that Jesus turned the water into wine, which is very, very nice. Uh, he came to uh, uh, Cana and he talked, uh, I know Pastor Jay talked a lot about the water changing into wine and what this all represents. I'm not going to go there. But uh, he was very, very polite about talking about wine and, and uh, all the things that go with it. If I was preaching that message, some of you would have left the church. I'm so glad he did that because I think that wine was 100% potent alcohol this was the alcohol of the Holy Ghost he started the ministry with the Holy Spirit hallelujah he with the the, 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 the diluted water that is water is found everywhere he made it into the best wine maybe your life once upon a time was like water it was diluted when Jesus came into your life your diluted water became sweet wine when people came and tasted you oh this is Jesus in him this is Jesus in her your water was changed into wine coming into cedar park your children your life your family your job everything from dilutedness it went into the most beautiful wine can you say amen 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 I'll stop with that but you know I was just thinking uh, if, if, the, if uh, the, uh, the people say oh that was real wine uh, I can see Peter uh, and Andrew and uh, and all the disciples uh, coming down 
uh, uh, we, we're a little bit shaky here, a bit, uh, Jesus is a drunk. No, it didn't happen like that. No way. Jesus was not drunk. That, all, uh, that wine did not have alcohol in it. I think in my language, if you read my Tamil Indian language Bible, it says Jesus turned the water into grape juice. I like that version better. I'm going to keep what it says. So anyhow, we, we won't go there too, too much. The, you know, the, Jesus in verse uh, 46, Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee where he had made the water wine. You thought Jesus left town. He went a little bit out and then he came back. N never, never forget, Jesus will visit your home again. Maybe you were from Galilee. Maybe you were from Cana. Maybe your, your household. God is going to visit you again. Maybe once upon a time, he changed your water into wine. You received the salvation. You received the Holy Ghost. But something else happened in your house. Jesus is about ready to come back to your house. And he is, about, he is ready to do some miracles for your life hallelujah he's about to visit your life he's about to visit your wife he's about to visit your job your family whatever it might be even your retirement may Jesus visit you many were saved were right here in Cedar Park your children your uh, 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 maybe your sons your daughters once upon a time they were well but Suddenly, maybe the devil came and took your child away, took your son away, took your daughter away. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus is going to visit your home again. May you have the best Thanksgiving ever. May your sons and your daughters and your son-in-laws and daughter-in-laws, may all the in-laws of the house, they will gather and say Thanksgiving to God and say, God has visited our house again. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And, uh, and uh, there, was a, there was a certain noble man who son uh, was sick at Capernaum when he heard that Jesus uh, when he heard that Jesus what does it say there uh, I lost uh, that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee he went to him and implored him to come when he heard this nobleman, though he was a very high royal official, it doesn't matter who you are. Our Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You can be high up, but then... When something happens in your family, there's only one place you can go. Not the best pharmacy in the world, not the right head, not the Bartels drug. There is one place you can go. You get the holy antibiotic, which is the Lord Jesus Christ and the blood of the Lord Jesus. One drop from the blood of Jesus, one drop injected into your body, your body will be made well. You will be made whole in the name of Jesus Christ. There it was. The noble, high noble official heard who Jesus is. He knew where to find the doctor. He probably knew all the doctors that were around. He knew all the medications to give. But those medications could not heal this, uh, his son. But he knew where to find healing. I have prayed for many doctors. I have prayed for their healings. Doctors are a gift from God to the whole world. Even the virus that we is going around, they're inventing the vaccinations. But I want to tell you, long time ago at the cross of Calvary, we have the divine healing. We just have to come to the Lord Jesus where we can get that divine healing. Hallelujah. He heard. He heard. May you hear where Jesus is. I believe Jesus is here, right here at Cedar Park. He is visiting again Cedar Park. Maybe there are a bunch of empty chairs, but I believe the time is coming very, very soon. That's nine o'clock service is going to be so packed up. You got to get here at 8.30 to find a seat. May God change it all around. And may God have from one service to second service to third service and fourth service because somebody here in Seattle, Washington, Washington heard there is Jesus here at Cedar Park. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
my father was a hindu man he worshiped all the idols in india we have 333 million gods and goddesses and uh, nobody ever told him about jesus and uh, when he was about 18 19 years old a missionary uh, an assembly of god missionary all the way from england showed up hallelujah in his village he began to proclaim jesus christ is the living god well he went to that missionary and he said sir how many gods do you have in your religion he said one and his name is jesus well my god my father looked at this missionary and he said my goodness your religion is such a poor religion you have only one god my religion has 333 million gods and goddesses if one god will fail i go to another one i go to another one i go to another one for the i have the whole lifetime to figure out who the real god is well he had this little chat with him and he went home as a big sickness in epidemic in their uh, uh, village many hundreds and hundreds of people died i'm talking in 1938 there was no vaccination for smallpox people died he also was stricken with smallpox he was put outside in the dog house so that the sickness will not spread through the rest of the family so he took all the idols and he began to wash them and he began to feed those idols and he began to call upon them heal me heal me and he got very angry there was no response from them but suddenly he remembered oh i forgot to call on that one god that that white man told he was from england he said at the jesus something about jesus and he said jesus if you are the real god i want you to touch me i want you to heal me i want you to uh, save me if you save my life i will give my entire life to you well guess what our god is a prayer answering god you come to jesus he will hear you you come to god he will touch you you come to, you call on the name of jesus he will hear you well he he when he said that prayer he fell asleep when he woke up in the morning he was totally healed by the power of god there was no church in that area or in that entire region there were no churches there and uh, only this missionary came once a week to preach the gospel in his village he ran next day to the center of the village and he found out where is that white man they said he comes only on friday evening friday evening he goes there found the missionary he got him or got a hold of him and he said jesus healed me the missionary been there five years didn't even have one convert he goes that is impossible he says how is it possible you don't have a bible you don't know the gospel you have never no you don't know anything about jesus how is it possible my father looked at him and he said you said in your message whoever calls on the name of jesus will be saved will be healed will be, will be delivered will be set free i called on that one name jesus and he heard me and and it's and he healed my body oh hallelujah that missionary began to hug him his first convert showed up for him after being there five years and he gave him a bible say read the bible there was no dictionaries or wikipedia or or google in those days he read the bible and he said go lay hands on the sick and they shall recover he went to the uh, village and he began to preach bring all the sick people to me there were no hospital so people began to bring the sick people he put his hands on them and they began to get healed he went to the missionary what do i do with all these people he said you have to start a church and he said okay he went and go found a garage started the first church and the, became the first assembly of god church in my city of coimbatore hallelujah well today that church has spread all over india we have more than 800 churches just in india alone we planted a church in sri lanka indonesia and in nepal well we heard about jesus let's hear more and more about jesus see the park is a place where if you come you're not going to hear about something else but you're going to hear about the lord jesus christ jesus christ will be preached here from generation to generation until jesus comes you can be very assured of that hallelujah you know we see 
How about this noble man coming to Jesus to heal his son? He was at the point of death. Does it say there? Point of death. Where heaven and earth are going to meet or hell and earth are going to meet. Where in the point? Where, where is that point? It was at the point of death. If they were saved, born again and transformed, you meet heaven. But if you are not, you're going to definitely go on the other side. It was the point. It was the breaking point. Maybe there's a breaking point in your life. I want to tell you, Jesus is there right at that breaking point. Come to the Lord Jesus. God can change your death to life. He can change your night into day. Your darkness into sunshine. Hallelujah. Only Jesus can do that. You know, many times we see that uh, and Jesus, he implored Jesus to come to his house. We, we got to grab a hold of Jesus and say, Jesus, you just come and you just heal. You just do the mighty work. And he, Jesus began to have a little message in there. Unless you people see signs and wonders, you'll by no means uh, believe. Go to the next verse. He said, as Jesus was telling, he was not for that noble man, but it was for all the people that were standing around. He says, unless you people see signs and wonders, you don't believe. But noble man says, I, I, I know, I believe you. I have come to take you. But he says, he insists, sir, come down before my child dies. Well, sometimes Jesus doesn't have to go to that exact location. He can just say a word and they will be, you know, we read in the other gospels, Jairus came to Jesus and he said, I will come to your house. Even without asking, he volunteered, I'll come to your house. And, and you know, that was a centurion servant, sorry. Centurion, but he said, just say a word and my servant will be healed. And here Jairus says, he went to the house and he healed. But here, he, 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 he just says, you know, he, he, the word of God says, Jesus said to him, go your way. The most Wonderful word in the Bible is G-O. The two letters, G-O. Go preach the gospel. Go heal the sick. Go home, your son is healed. Go home, there's something that is wrong in your family is going to be set right. Go home, the job is waiting for you. Go home, the point of death has been changed to point of life. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me this morning? Hallelujah. I, I got news for you. I got news for you that Jesus can change the point of death to the point of life. Uh, well, he, he says, go, go. And he began to experience that when you, when he, <laughs> there was a, well, he was going home halfway. The servants met him and they said, your son lives. He didn't even reach home. The son showed up. There was a heavenly collusion. Hallelujah. The miracle news and the noble man met each other. It was not the Russia collusion. It was not the Ukraine collusion. It was the divine Holy Ghost collusion. May there be a Holy Ghost collusion in your life. Amen. 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 And there were, they said, your son lives. What a news. And he said, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I want to verify this one. That's what Jesus said. Unless you see signs and one. What hour did he get healed? And he says, that's the seventh hour. And they looked up. It was exactly that moment when Jesus said, go, the most powerful word, go, that very same moment, that disease, that sickness, the point of death changed to point of life. Hallelujah. That God is here. That God is right here to do some mighty miracles and mighty things for God. Mighty things for you in the name of Jesus. Well, I was preaching in uh, Romania. I go there a lot and uh, many people know me there. There, there was a, a, a big church that I was preaching. At the end of the meeting, one la lady came and she said, uh, Brother Andrew, they call me Brother Andrew in Romania. Uh, I, I, I came all the way from another country, Spain, and I heard that you're preaching in my town here in Cluj. And uh, uh, God told me that you have to come to my house and pray. 
I said, God didn't tell me to go to your house to pray. I said, I'm not coming to your house. You have to talk to the people that schedule because I was on a 22-day uh, meeting in uh, Romania. She said, oh, then she said, no, no, no. If you don't come to my house, something bad will happen to you. I looked at the lady. I'm not coming. Definitely not coming. You know, but it, 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 she didn't put it the right way. She began to cry and weep. I said, then I said, listen, talk to the, uh, the man that takes me around if you have time we will come next day uh, we went to the house lady please tell me why did you want me to come to your house and he said, well, I could have prayed for you in the church I don't have to come to you well listen I, 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 the Lord told me if you just come and step into the house and begin to pray something will happen I said tell me what it is well my husband and I have been separated for three years and I don't even know where he is but if we pray God will put us back together Oh my goodness, this was not a headache or a stomach ache. This was pretty big. I got a little upset and angry. I could have prayed for this thing in the church, not travel all the way over here. But anyhow, I said, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray wherever that husband is, wherever his point is, in the name of Jesus, he will neither be able to eat nor sleep. I pray that he will repent. It was like kind of an angry prayer because uh, I wanted to just get out of there as quickly as possible. I prayed and the Lord began to speak a few things. I prayed for that woman and I left. Next day, this woman came uh, back to where I was staying. She was knocking on the door and uh, the, actually the, the secretary opened the door. I said, well, I want to see Brother Andrew. And the secretary comes to me, that woman is back. She wants to see you. Tell her I am not coming to see her. Tell her to come to the meeting. No, 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 no. She began to insist again. And uh, well, she, I said, I'll give you five minutes. You can need to tell. Well, after you prayed, let me tell you what happened. 30 minutes later, my phone rang. It was an un known caller when I answered that phone that was my husband and he began to say the last 30 minutes something happened I began to shake I began to sweat I began to cry I want to repent I want to come back to you will you please forgive me and she was so happy well the story doesn't end there. Three, three years later, I was back in the same city preaching in another church. And I forgot all about this. And I saw a woman coming straight to the front. And she sat in the front. And she was doing some sign language to me. I could not recognize who that woman is. Kept looking at her. At the end of the meeting, she again came. Do you remember me? I said, absolutely no. She said, well, you, the, you are the one that came and prayed in my house. And, and uh, let me tell you what God all, all did. She began to talk and talk. I had to have a translator all the time. He was By the time the husband walked in the front. I was, then I was able to pray for the both the husband and the wife. The marriage was restored at the point of breakage. Hallelujah. May God restore everything that has broken in your lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. As I told you, I went to Australia just to pray for one man who has been my friend for a long time. He was in an accident uh, and uh, uh, when he was visiting Fiji Islands, they brought him to Brisbane. Long story, I just went there to pray for four days and came right back. While I was there, I had another pastor also who uh, started a church there uh, from Perth. He started a church in Brisbane, so he also came to the hospital. So both of us were chatting. He said, what are you doing Sunday evening? I was in the hospital in the whole day praying for this man. Evening, I said, I'm, I, well, please come to my church. Went to this church to preach in, uh, in, in uh, Brisbane. Well, as it's a new church plan and the pastor and I were, we were chatting and laughing. This pastor's name is Costia. About a few years ago, 2010, I was uh, in Australia preaching in many, many of the churches over there. And he was with me. He was uh, translating in some churches because they were Romanian churches. And uh, at the end, we were all in his house. As we were in his house, I was uh, praying in the room and the Holy Spirit said, get up and go tell him that God is going to give him children. He was married for 12 years. He didn't have no children. I said, brother, 
Pastor Kostia, come here. And God is telling me that you're going to have multiple children. Uh, he said, call your wife. I said, the wife came. I anointed them with oil. I said, show me your bedroom. I went into the bedroom. I put anointed that bedroom in, with oil in the name of Jesus. I pray it will produce children. Well, he, after a few days, he writes back to me. He says, listen, Brother Andrew, I seen you pray over people. I seen you prophesy over people. But this one, you went out on a limb. I don't know. My wife is a nurse. She knows everything about everything. Thing. I don't know if this is a good one, but I said, don't worry. If God, if the Holy Spirit has done, He will do some work. Well, within a, uh, uh, within six to eight months, He wrote me an email. My wife is pregnant and has gone over the three month period because every time after the first and the second month, it always got three months. Well, a year later, a beautiful daughter was born. Hallelujah. Then I was in Romania. I said, wow. I said, Raluca, her name is Raluca. I took the baby in my hands. The baby was only three, four months old. I said, Get ready, the boy is coming. And the boy, she said, Oh, I already had so much complexity in my body. Everything changed. I don't know if I could handle another one. But I said, Get ready, get ready. I said, Well, within two years later, they had a boy. Glory to God. 2017, I was back in Australia in the same house. I I said, well, this is Evangeline and this is Isaac. I said, who is that crying in the back over there? Well, that is our third child. The third child just showed up. Hallelujah. Multiple children and God did the mighty work. God is in the miracle working business. Since then, 28 children have been born after prayer. The Lord has answered in a mighty, mighty way. I can tell you story after story where you will be amazed what God is doing around the nations. Uh, let me tell you, two, three weeks ago, I was in Vancouver and I was sitting there I was preaching there and uh, while during the service, a woman kept turning around and smiling at me because the, from Portland, this woman had come and uh, she was also new to that church. If you could put that slide, if you have that. And uh, I've been, uh, then I, she kept smiling. I didn't know that woman. So during the prayer time, I, I tapped her. Who are you? Uh, go to that uh, first slide where that uh, there is a, uh, this is that woman right there. And uh, she's been texting me uh, uh, a few days ago or a few months ago during uh, the October time. She said, my name is Christina. Sorry to write, but I really need to talk to you. At that moment, I was in London preaching somewhere and I was so long. I've been praying and praying for so many people. I was wiped out, tired. I went to the room. It's midnight. Go to the next slide. And, uh, and she says, Brother Andrew, but I insist. I, you, you have to call me, call me. You know, when uh, if you call a woman, watch out. Your time goes really, I mean, uh, well, I'm not going to go into that. But. It, it, it takes, but it was already midnight, 4.30 a.m. I have to get up and go to uh, another city. Uh, so I didn't want to call. But when I was lying down and I received this text message, I said, you know what? I'll just call. I called this woman. Her name is Christina. I said, what's the matter? She said, I have cancer. I don't know what to do. I saw you preaching in another church. I know God is doing great and mighty things. Will you please pray for me on the phone? I know all the other brothers and sisters were sleeping where in the, in the, uh, in the apartment complex in London. Everything thing is very very tiny and small I said okay well I even if I wake up those people I cannot pray very softly I can only pray loud I just you you see me right now I put that uh, uh, phone down on the speaker and I began to scream and yell at the top of my voice I said cancer you are cancelled in the name of Jesus you go away chemo you stop this is God's divine healing divine power shall work in your life and go to the next slide over there and she writes back See, see, this is the text. After two, three days, she writes back a text to me. She says, I'm at the chemo making. They dropped off from 73 to 2. I don't understand all the terminal. If you could put that voice message from her. And, uh, you know, just a few uh, weeks later, she called me back. And there, this, uh, the, the, the message came in the audio. Can you put that, play that audio file? 
Hi brother, um, I have such a good news for you. Um, I'm trying to send you a vocal voice message because I'm driving. So that's why I want to tell you that the doctor called me uh, some minutes ago and uh, he told me that um, the PET scan results look so good. So there is no evidence of cancer in my body right now. So That is good. Um, no evidence so of amazing. cancer in my body. Well, that was then, three weeks ago when I met her for the very first time in Vancouver, she came running to me and said, I just had a PET scan and the PET scan declared, the doctor declared, I am cancer free. Hallelujah. Our God is a cancer canceling God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. And uh, let me just tell you one last uh, story. I was uh, again preaching in Romania in one of the uh, hospitals. They called me to go and pray in the hospital. And uh, when I went to the hospital, this woman was completely in coma for nine days. She just gave birth to a beautiful child, but was in coma. After I finished the meeting, they said, this is a very, very important case. We must go and pray. So I went to there. They had removed all the tubes because, but she could breathe, but, uh, but there was no life. She was still in coma nine days. Uh, then we, as I walked into that IC uh, intensive care unit, uh, the, uh, the doctor uh, wanted to make sure I'm not carrying any Metallica. He took my cell phone, the keys, everything, and he put a nice doctor suit on me. Oh man, did I look nice with the hat. <laughs> but anyhow, I said, could I take the oil with me to pray? He said, what is this? Uh, uh, some kind of antibiotic? I said, no, this is, I didn't want to tell him, but I, inside I'm saying, this is the best antibiotic in the world that can do mighty miracles of God. Well, I went inside, I walked to that uh, woman and uh, there, there she was. Uh, I began to pray, Lord, I cancel death out of her. I pray that this woman go back and be the mother that she is called to be, the wife that she is called to be, the grandmother that she will become. In the name of Jesus, may she go and live in Jesus' name. Well, I prayed, I left. Next morning, six o'clock, I was in the airport and uh, 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 the, the brother who was checking me in got the phone call. Well, something happened last night. After 30, 45 minutes, this woman woke up and he said, I am hungry, give me some food. And she ate. Well, three, four, uh, several years later, I was back. In 2018, I was preaching in one of the churches and I was saying, I prayed for some woman. Could you put that next slide over there? And I said, there's a woman here in the city who was in coma and I don't know who this is. Not this one, the, the, the other one there. Uh, there. And the, 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 there was a translator there. He said, that's me. I came with you inside that ICU. That was, uh, that, that's the picture of the family and uh, that little girl right there is Rebecca, that beautiful daughter. And she came out of her coma in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Point of death and the point of life. Today at Cedar Park, we're going to change the situations. Wherever your point is, wherever your situation is, wherever your life is, from the point of death, we're going to change it to the point of life. Where are you? Where are your children? Where is, where is your family? Where is your situation? What kind of situation are you in? We are going to change the point of death to the point of life. As you are going home, may somebody walk by the time you park the car. It's already done. It's already done. Because why? You know, you went to Cedar Park and something happened over there. Because Jesus showed up at Cedar Park and he touched me and he healed me. He delivered me. He changed my situation. Would you all stand this morning? I want to ask you if there is anybody here that is battling. Yes, sir. I am I'm the one. I need some prayer today. I need some help today. I need God to touch me. I am at a point where 
things are breaking down. I lost my job. I lost my situation. I lost my wife. I lost my husband. I, I lo- I'm losing my children. I want God to change. I want God to transform. I want God to save my family. You are at a point you say, no more. Uh, oh, I know where you can find the greatest doctor. I know you can f- where you can find the greatest uh, uh, p- uh, man. Jesus, God, who can change your life. Thank you for coming. Just play softly there. Hallelujah. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. Thank you for all your goodness. There are several people here battling certain things in their life, oh Lord God. I pray that you would touch them by the power of your Holy Spirit. I want to ask you if there's anybody here, you are at a point that you are fed up There is no options when you are running out of options. May God change your bad option to an option of life. Hallelujah. Is there anybody here who would say, Brother, that's me. Please pray for me. Please raise your hand. I'd like to pray for you. There's many hands going up. Hallelujah. Many, many hands are going up. Let me pray. Let me pray. Father, I thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Brother Steve, I know I saw you yesterday. May God touch your heart. May you never have a stroke again. May you never have a heart surgery. May you never have any problems in your... May God give you life and life more abundantly. You shall not die, but you shall live and see and declare the power of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I know we didn't talk about this, but the Holy Spirit just touched, told me your heart condition. God is touching you and healing you. Hallelujah. We're going to close the meeting after this prayer. But if you like prayer, I would like you to come up and we will pray for you. All the pastors also will join me to pray for anybody that is, uh, that needs prayer this morning. Father, I thank you for every hand that has been lifted up. There are so many hands that has been lifted up, Lord Jesus. Father, whatever their point is, that is going to be reversed. The point of death is going to be reversed to point of life. I pray that you will change it, Lord Jesus. There are many parents who are standing there. They have lost their children to the devil, but we are grabbing them back. We are taking them back into the house of God. There's somebody got to be sitting next to them, but they are not here by faith. We are calling them in. Hallelujah. The the death sentence, let it be changed to life sentence, Lord God. Hallelujah. The, The dying man shall be turned to a living man. The dying woman shall be turned to a living woman. If there's anybody suffering with cancer, with tumor, with problems, we cancel all of those and speak life into them, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. There let there be salvation in the household. As we read in the book of John, the whole household believed in verse 53. Let the whole household become believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord God, for everyone who came this morning. May they, may they meet halfway their miracle. Your son lives. Hallelujah. May they meet with the miracle. May they be heavenly, divinely collusion that will happen today in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, for the Cedar Park and the beautiful church that you are given. I pray, God, you will bless this church, bless all the pastors, even as, as Pastor Jay is preaching. I pray that you would anoint him and use him mightily in that place. In Jesus' mighty holy name we pray. Amen. Now be the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Everybody shouted, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. I just... uh, uh, pronounce the blessing you are free to go but if you like prayer you I welcome you to come to the front we will definitely be here and pray for you as long as it takes God bless you have a wonderful Sunday afternoon